All right, what's up guys? Today, I'm with the wonderful Kimberleya. Hi. She's an amazing YouTuber. She has her own business. She's an entrepreneur. And today we're gonna be working at her studio, her space. And I'm gonna walk you guys through really start to finish on the proper camera settings, the right lens to use, and really how to set up your environment in an artificial light scenario. So I'll have a montage that shows Kimberleya's content and her channel. You guys can check her out. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Have a great day. <laughs> we're gonna keep that in. So with that said, let's get started. <laughs> so what we're gonna start with, this is our before shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record here so we have an actual reference of what we start with and then the final product that we end with. So here we can see that Kimberly, a wonderful subject, she's kind of pushed up against the background here. We're using our natural ambient light in our scenario, not a good thing. And we also have our settings not with the proper exposure. So what we're gonna start with first is by increasing our ISO. So we're gonna boost our ISO to get a little bit of a better exposure. We don't wanna get the exposure too high because we still haven't turned on uh, the lighting that we're gonna be using here. So let's first start with um, getting a proper uh, settings for our shutter speed. Now we're at a 50th of a second, which is gonna be perfect because we're shooting at 24 frames a second. And let's start with first adding one key light. I'm gonna flip on this. Perfect. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut away the excess ambient light that we have in here because these tube lights, I think they're called fluorescent lighting, is not a good thing. You never want to be using fluorescent lighting. So, voila. And so we're looking a little bit better here, but what we're gonna first do is because these lights are relatively cool. The Kelvin temperature uh, is quite cold for this lighting setup. So what we're gonna do here is scroll to our white balance setting, and then we're gonna go to manual. Okay. And we're gonna set it at about 4,800. And so now we still have pretty harsh shadows. So what we're gonna do is turn on our fill light, which we have right here. Okay. So what this is gonna do is this fill light is going to fill in the shadows on the face. All right, and we're gonna change the exposure. How you doing, Kimberlea? Fine. <laughs> Perfect. You're doing really good. Look way better than I did when the lights were off. Now we have our ISO at 500, which is giving us a nice even lighting. We have our shutter speed at a 50th of a second. And we also have our aperture at 2.8. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help us blur out the background. So when we change our focal length, because right now we're at 24, if we were to zoom in, and now we're at 50, you can see that she's perfectly in focus and the background is falling off because it's slightly blurry. This is already looking a lot better than our before and after. So here's the before and here's the after. Like that magical editing uh, edition in there? I do that too. <laughs> yeah, right? The snaps and the claps, baby. The snaps and the claps. So this is already looking really good. But what I wanna do now is another trick is, luckily her outfit is already very contrasted from the background. If she was wearing a white shirt in this scenario and we wanted to shoot a really good looking video, I would definitely have her change her outfit. Today, it's perfect. So we're not gonna do that for this scenario. But what we want to do is move her away from the background. This is gonna create more of a separation and allow for the background to be more blurry and a little bit, uh, it's gonna be a little bit darker depending on the lighting, but it's gonna fall off more. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Kimberly, our wonderful model, you can stand up. And we're gonna push it a little bit forward. Now, now that we're changing where our subject is, we also have to kind of change our lighting a little bit because it's gonna change the angle. Perfect. Now I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit so we can get a similar framing to what we want. And I'm gonna zoom in. 
So now I'm actually really happy with this lighting and the distance that she, that Kimberly has from the background. It's creating a nice separation. We're at a low aperture, which means we have a very shallow depth of field. We're framing her on the top third, which is an, actually another thing I wanna mention real quick. What makes the most pleasing image possible is when you frame important areas of your image on the thirds. So there's an imaginary line going across the top third, the bottom third, the, the right and then the left. You see how we have her framed on that top third. Now, if I were to change this framing and put her in the middle, you see, we still have great lighting. We still have great coloring. The background looks really nice, but the framing throws out the aesthetic of the image. So that's something that I really want you guys to keep in mind is that it's always most comfortable, especially with the talking scene to frame your subject on the top third. Now, personally, right now we're at a 50 millimeter. This looks great for an average talking video. If we want something that's maybe a little bit more serious, we can go here to 70 where we're even closer to our subject. If we want something that's a little bit more fun, of course, we're dealing with the uh, outside stuff that we have here. <laughs> we have some workout equipment and stuff. so. We can't really get a super wide angle, but I wanna show you guys what that looks like. So if we have this wide angle, we frame her on the third. We always wanna have the camera pretty much at eye level for our subject in an interview because we're giving the viewer the feeling that they're at the same level of their uh, person that's talking. If I'm talking to the camera right now and I'm talking from down here, it feels a little bit weird if you're the audience looking at that. And if I'm talking from up here looking down on you, it feels a little bit weird as well. So we always wanna to try to frame our camera at the same eye level as our subject. So we can go a little bit lower because we're shooting wide and I'm gonna push in a little bit and minus the background stuff that's here, this is a lot more of a fun kind of um, less professional look, which is great for YouTube. And right now that's at 28 millimeters. So we can go even a little bit wider and that's at 24 millimeters. So the wider, the more playful, the more zoomed in, the more serious. So now that we have this set up, this looks great at 50 millimeters. Uh, our f-stop's at 2.8. Now this lighting scenario that we started with for this example is called uh, high key lighting. That's because our key light is basically all the way on and our fill light is all the way on and that's giving a very bright kind of like beauty blogger style um, that is really actually works really well for women because if you think of like a mob boss like a Sopranos or something they're always gonna have very dramatic low-key lighting so let's kind of experiment here and see the different kind of lighting scenarios that we can get depending on the look you're going for and what I want to mention is if your video vibe is bright and happy and you're doing like a, a an unboxing video for some type of thing, you know, hold on. If you, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, wait, what am I trying to say? If you're doing an unboxing video for some type of product, you want bright, good lighting from both sides. If you're doing something that's a lot more moody, maybe it's a documentary, something that's more uh, stylized, more cinematic, you wanna have actually the majority of your lighting only coming from one side of the subject. So let's kind of experiment here. I'm gonna turn down this light all the way. And now we can instantly see that we have highlights on the subject's left side of the face, her right, our left, and we can see the difference between this style of low key lighting versus this style of high key lighting. So what we're gonna do now is like I mentioned, uh, we have a really cool, more contrasting looking light setup. And what I wanna do is add a key, uh, excuse me, add a rim light, or it's also called a hair light, which is gonna, especially because she has dark hair and a dark shirt, it's gonna add a really nice highlight to our subject that's gonna separate them even more from the background. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm gonna grab this light. Hopefully this one works. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab this light here. And the reason I actually moved it from this side to this side is because our main light source is here. 
lighting this side of the face. If I do the rim light here, then there's gonna be the main light source from this angle and then the rim light. It actually looks better to have light and dark contrasting. So we'll see what that looks like. And the key to this is not to be lighting the front of the subject. We already have that squared away and looking good. So let's see what that looks like. And here's the before and here is the after. And now I want to kind of add a little bit of extra touch to the background. So we've done a lot of work with moving her, getting her to the right position, getting the proper focal length. Now I want to show you guys something that's called practicals. Now practicals are simply a light source in the background of the scene that you're shooting that doesn't have the purpose of lighting the subject. The only purpose that it has is adding a warm kind of glow and making the scene look a little bit more realistic because we have all these different lights and if there's no light behind her, it kind of can look a little bit uh, artificial, manufactured. So in feature films, they use what's called practicals, having lamps on in the background, having lights on in the background. This subconsciously gives the viewer a little bit more of a belief as to why the lighting kind of looks so good in the situation. And it gives it a little bit more energy, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. If it stays on, <laughs> Yeah, if it stays on. Okay, we're in business. Yeah, okay. that's fine. That's one practical. And the second practical, like I mentioned, this is not helping any lighting directly on our subject. This is just livening up and making the background look a little bit more realistic. So let's take a look at this angle and see what that looks like. So this is with the practicals and this is without the practicals. So I'm a huge fan of that. It really just kind of adds a little bit more special sauce to the scene that you are shooting. So I actually wanted to add uh, one more thing. We got our practicals, we got our set looking great. The lighting looks good. Um, I will mention that the nature of these lights is quite blue. Um, so one thing that I really wanted to share with you that you can get around this kind of more bluish lighting because it can have its drawbacks. If we are lighting our subject and her frontal lighting is this bluish light, but let's say we're in a different scenario and there's daylight in the background, that daylight is gonna be extra warm because our white balance is set to make her lighting look neutral. The background is gonna change color-wise a lot. So in this scenario, we're gonna actually get a little bit more of a tan lighting, which is actually really great for uh, talking footage. And it's gonna be really good for you to see this demonstration as well if you have different color temperatures on set. Sorry, I just spit everywhere. Different color temperatures on set uh, that you're working with. So what we're gonna use is colored gels, okay? And I'll just kind of briefly run over how to set it up on your light. Now you want to make sure you're not putting these on a light that gets hot. These lights don't heat up, so we're not gonna have any issues, but this will melt as if you put it in a microwave on your light. So you wanna be, sh before trying this, you wanna make sure your lights don't get too hot. This is like a little bit warm, but it's not gonna be an issue. So we want to cover our entire light with our gel. And you can see the difference on my face here. Dun -dun, dun -dun. You can already see the kind of effect this is going to have. Okay. And we're gonna put one more down here. Voila. Now, we're also gonna add a gel to this side. And this is gonna really soften up our scenario for two reasons. It's gonna diffuse the light and take down the intensity of our main lights a few stops. So we're gonna definitely have to change the exposure on our camera and we're definitely gonna have to change our white balance. So on this light, we're gonna do the same thing. Again, this light does not heat up, so we are good to attach our gel directly to the light source. Now, if we look at our scene, it's a lot softer, but you can see now it's a very like warm uh, scenario. So we're gonna start by increasing our ISO to get the proper exposure. And we are going to then change our white balance to match our new color situation. Right about there. So now you can see the difference between without the colored gels and with the colored gels. A lot softer, 
a lot more of a warm feel and just kind of taking away that studio lighting kind of setup. So it's really effective to use if you want to match the color temperatures of your situation. Now, I do want to mention that we didn't add a gel to our hair light. It's gonna make the hair light stand out even more because the color temperature is completely different, which can work for you. Sometimes a golden hair light looks really nice. Sometimes it doesn't. So you really have to use your own discernment uh, for your shooting situation. Cool, so that wraps it up for our artificial lighting setup from this beginning looking stage to now this final setup. Not good lighting, good lighting. <laughs> uh, if you like that tutorial, you can check out my cinematography masterclass where I go even deeper into all of these techniques to really upgrade your filmmaking using audio, cinematography, using, I already said cinematography, using lighting, using all the great techniques that feature films use. So you can check out that link. If it looks like something you like, enroll. If it's not, that's good too. I will see you in the next video.